Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I am a cardiologist. I have been practicing at the Texas Medical Center for more than 30 years. Let us learn something about bradycardias. Let us look at some of the differential diagnosis for bradycardia on an electrocardiogram. We could be dealing with sinus bradycardia, we could be dealing with junctional rhythm or it could be idioventricular rhythm, it could be atrial fibrillation with slow ventricular response, it could be atrial flutter with slow ventricular response, it could be complete heart block and many more surprises. So, let us look at some of these examples. Before we come to a conclusion as to what type of bradycardia we are dealing with, it is very important to systematically analyze the electrocardiogram or a rhythm strip so that we understand the relationship between the atria and the ventricles. So, first we need to determine the rate. For a sinus bradycardia, we need to have a heart rate below 60 beats per minute. Second, we determine the RR interval to see if they are regular or irregular. That tells us about the rhythm. Next, we are going to look at the atrial activity in the electrocardiogram. Once we look at the electrical activity, then we look at the AV conduction that is the PR interval and see if the PR interval is constant, is it short, is it long or is there AV dissociation. That will be followed by ventricular activity, the QRS complex. Is the QRS complex narrow? Is the QRS complex wide? Next, as I already told you about, we are going to look at the PR relationship. The PR interval, is it constant or is it varying? That tells us about whether we are dealing with any kind of halt blocks. And finally, we are going to look at the relationship between P and QRS complexes. When you study an electrocardiogram, systematically going through this list from the top to the bottom on several occasions, you realize that it is much easier to understand the underlying rhythm when you are in doubt. In the next several examples, first I am going to present the electrocardiogram. I would like you to pause the video and come up with your diagnosis. When you have your diagnosis, you can continue, then I will make my observations. Okay, here we definitely have a bradycardia. If you look at, we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is uh, less than 30 beats per minute. So, we have bradycardia and we see definite P waves. The PR intervals seem to be constant. So, we are dealing with a sinus bradycardia because the QRS complexes are narrow. There is a 1 to 1 P to QRS relationship. So, this is sinus bradycardia. That is how you come to a conclusion. First, you look at the atrial activity, then you look at the PR interval, then you look at the PR interval and see if it is constant because you may be dealing with a second degree AV block or third degree AV block where the PR intervals may vary from beat to beat. Next, we look at the QRS complex to see if it is narrow or is it wide. If it is narrow, we know the QRS is supraventricular. If it is wide, it could be supraventricular or ventricular because if you have a bundle branch block such as right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block, you could have a wide QRS complex in a bradycardia which may look like ventricular. Is it one to one relationship or is it two to one relationship or is there any evidence of AV dissociation or the atria beating at their own mind and the ventricles are beating on their own, then we have AV dissociation. Okay. Keeping these things in mind, let us move to the next electrocardiogram. Just pause this for a moment.
come up with your diagnosis or at least identify the components of the electrocardiogram and when you are ready you can press the play button. Okay, just looking at it broadly, I can say we have bradycardia. We have a supraventricular QRS complex. Then we have P waves, definite P waves here. Uh oh, we have P waves, and the next thing is PR interval. If you look at the PR interval, it looks like the PR intervals are changing. Uh huh, that's interesting. When you see a variation in the PR interval. When you see a variation in the PR interval, it is always good to look at the rhythm strips. Now, here is a rhythm strip and look at the rhythm strip which has the best deflection of the P waves. Here we see, here we see the best deflection in this lead. Now, let us look at the PR relationship here. We have a first degree AB block to start with. We have a long PR interval, it gets longer, then it drops. Again, you got a long PR interval, it drops. So, we are dealing with uh, what looks like a Wenke bog here. So, the, we have an underlying sinus bradycardia, along with that we have a first degree AV block and a Wenke bog type 1. All right. So, that is my interpretation. Let us go to the next electrocardiogram. Pause here and make up your diagnosis and then we will proceed. Okay, we again we see narrow QRS complexes and obviously we have a bradycardia. Next, we want to look for the P waves. I do not see any definite P waves preceding the QRS complexes. There could be something after the QRS complex, we will come to that in a minute, but preceding the QRS complex, there is no P wave. However, there is a notch here which makes us believe there could be a retrograde P wave. Is this P wave consistent or is it just coming on and off? That is the main thing we need to look at. It looks like there is a notch here, there is a notch here, there could be a notch here. So, the PRS, the QRS complex is narrow. We have a P wave coming after the QRS complexes. Uh, the rate is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is about 50 beats per minute. It could be an escape junctional rhythm because we see the P waves coming after the QRS complexes. We do not see a definite P wave before the QRS complex. So, we do not have any P or relationship, but the ventricular rate appears to be constant with a narrow QRS complex. So, this is most likely a junctional rhythm with a retrograde P wave. Okay, what is your diagnosis? Pause. When you are ready, let us proceed. Okay, just looking at the EKG broadly, I can say we have a bradycardia. We have a narrow QRS complex. We have P waves. Okay, we definitely have P waves here. If you look at V1, there is a P wave, 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 there is a P wave. Is there a relationship between the P waves and the QRS complexes? Let us see. This PR interval is different from this interval, and there is no, this is shorter, this is longer. So, there is no definite relationship there is a P wave here right after the QRS complex. So, there is no definite relationship between the QRS complexes and the P waves. What condition and what condition do we see in AB dissociation? There are a couple of times where we see AB dissociation. One is complete heart block with probably a junctional escape rhythm here or ventricular tachycardia where we see AB dissociation, but that is a different story altogether. As far as bradycardia is concerned, here we have AB dissociation. So, this is uh, a, a, an electrocardiogram with a complete heart block with uh, narrow QRS complex, which makes us believe that we are dealing with an escape junctional rhythm. Okay, what is your diagnosis here? First of all, we know the rate is slow. So, this is bradycardia. Second, we have a wide QRS complex, which is 160 milliseconds wide. Then, we have a little notch here. We do not know if this is a retrograde P wave. 
Anyway, we have a wild curious bradycardia. This is most likely idioventricular rhythm with a retrograde atrial activity. All right, what is your diagnosis? You can pause the video here and when you are ready, we will proceed. We have a bradycardia. We have a narrow QRS complex. We do not see clear cut P waves, but we do see some undulating waves. We will come to that in a minute. So, we have a narrow QRS complex uh, uh, rhythm with a bradycardia and now let us look at the atrial activity. Now, we want to look at the atrial activity. If you pay special attention, we have what looks like flutter waves here. Probably a slow flutter, but nonetheless they look like flutter waves. So, we are dealing with a atrial flutter with a very slow ventricular rate. I am sorry, along with that we also have low QRS complex across the electrocardiogram. Okay, you can pause here and make up your diagnosis, then we will proceed. Again, we have a narrow QRS complex here and we see some what looks like another example of atrial flutter with uh, maybe one 5 to 1 conduction sometimes and 4 to 1 conduction sometimes. So, whenever we see a varying RR interval, we should always think about uh, atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter with varying ventricular conduction. And we have a narrow QRS complex which tells us this is a supraventricular QRS complex. Then we have these uh, flutter waves. Okay, let us move on to the next one. Okay, what is your diagnosis here? Whenever we see varying RR intervals, we may have to calculate the heart rate for at least 6 seconds and multiply that by 10 that will give you the heart rate per minute. In this electrocardiogram, we have wide QRS complexes. We do see some atrial activity here. We do see some atrial activity, but we do not see atrial activity with each beat. And there are some beats which look wide. And if you pay careful attention, in some of them you can see the spike, electrical spike. That means we are dealing with uh, a pacemaker and the pacemaker does not seem to be firing appropriately or at least the ventricle is not capturing the pacemaker activity. As you can see, we have a regular wide QRS rhythm here. Then again, we have a pause here. There is another pause here and now we got two beats where we see the pacemaker spikes, but there is no ventricular activity. Whenever you see an electrocardiogram with wide QRS complexes, you should always pay attention to see if we are dealing with uh, a pacemaker rhythm or are we dealing with uh, a ventricular rhythm. Okay, you can pause here and uh, make up your diagnosis and when you are ready, we will proceed. Again, we have a narrow QRS complex and we have definitely have P waves preceding each QRS complex. You can see in lead 2 rhythm strip here. So, we have a definite PR relationship. So, this is uh, like a sinus bradycardia and in addition to sinus bradycardia, we also see an acute inferior myocardial my infarction, a STEMI along with some reciprocal changes in the anterior leads. When you are looking at an electrocardiogram, you should pick up all the finer points in the electrocardiogram, so that you know exactly what is happening inside the human heart that is reflected on this surface electrocardiogram. Okay, you can pause the tracing here and make up your diagnosis. When you are ready, you can press the play button. Okay, you are back and let us look at here. We see P waves here. Then we see a narrow QRS complex. We see a P narrow QRS, P narrow QRS. Okay, here we have what looks like sinus bradycardia. Once we have established a rhythm, the next thing is look for any additional features that may be in the electrocardiogram. 
Here we see narrow QRS bradycardia along with that we see some tall T waves here. They are so kind of uh, abnormal. They have a narrow base, narrow base tall T waves. You should always think of what? Hyperkalemia. Good. Let us go to the next electrocardiogram. Okay. What is your diagnosis? Pause the video here for a moment. Make up your diagnosis and when you are ready, we will proceed. First of all, we are looking at wide QRS complexes. So, this is a ventricular rhythm. Whenever you see a ventricular rhythm, we have to think about are we dealing with uh, idioventricular rhythm or are we dealing with a uh, supraventricular rhythm with uh, bundle branch block or are we dealing with a pacemaker rhythm. Sometimes we may not be paying attention to some of the finer points on the electrocardiogram and if you look carefully, you see a little notch here, a sharp spike. That is the pacemaker spike. You see it in V4, V5. You also see it in 3 and to certain degree in ABF and also in lead 1. It is important to pay attention to the finer details in the electrocardiogram so that you can come up with a composite diagnosis. So, here we are dealing with not with an accelerated idioventricular rhythm. This is a pacemaker rhythm with definite pacemaker spikes. It is not a bradycardia, but nonetheless, I put this electrocardiogram to em emphasize the fact that when we are looking at a wide QRS complex, we should always think about the differential diagnosis. Number one, supraventricular QRS complex with bundle branch block. Number two, ventricular arrhythmia. Number three, pacemaker rhythm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is a very quick overview of bradycardia and the differential diagnosis of bradycardia. I am Dr. Nick Nickham and please, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for your time.